What's up, YouTubers? Jose Quiñones, the CNC dude here. Today, I want to do my review of the Laguna IQ CNC router. Now, if you don't like long videos, let me give you the summary. I love the machine. I hate the controller. If you want to learn more about the machine, stay tuned. All right, so what do we have here? This is a Laguna IQ. In essence, it is a two feet, two feet wide, three feet long, so 24 inches by 36 inches CNC router. So this is not a machine you're gonna get for doing a cabinetry working. Uh, this is it's not that big. I mean, maybe for you would use a four, a four by 10 or a four by eight or a five by 10. But you know, an insane amount of projects being sold today on numerous uh, websites come from machines this big. If you want to do uh, little wooden trinkets, um, puzzles for kids, toys, uh, kitchen appliances, not appliances, but like, you know, like uh, meat blocks or uh, spoons or who knows, whatever your imagination can come up with, you can probably do them with a, a machine this small. So you don't need a gigantic machine to do these things. Overall, I believe the machine is incredibly well constructed. I am super happy with how they built it. And in fact, as you know, I am building a CNC router on some of my other videos. So some of you may be asking, why did you buy a CNC router if you are building a CNC router? Well, actually, I'm planning on getting way much more than two, but that's for a later story. Um, I, have, I have gotten a lot of ideas from looking at how this machine was, was constructed, and in fact, I already feel ashamed of the construction that I'm doing with my personal construction because, wow, I mean, the way they build this really good materials, um, you know, thick pieces of aluminum, uh, really sturdy metal construction steel, this is a really well put together machine. From, an, uh, from a mechanical point of view, I am drooling here. If, if it, um, it's, it's truly, the, <laughs> I cannot imagine how to improve on this. It has cable management, it has all of the sensors. Uh, so from, um, from a machine point of view, unbeatable. You cannot go wrong with it if you're looking for something in the two by three feet uh, footprint. Now this machine is almost a clone with the Axiom. I have no idea who came first, my apologies for that. I know people out there looking for two by three machines compared, compared them often. I do not have an Axiom, so I cannot tell you what, what kind of comparison they are. I was gonna get one last year, but uh, I eventually settled for this. So why did I buy this machine? Great question. It was a fantastic deal. It came with Aspire, which as you know, it is a, a $2,000 license. It came with bits. It came with the dust collector. So the gentleman who sold it was moving to a, a different venue and he tried selling it. Uh, he couldn't sell it, so eventually he lowered the price and when I saw it, I was like, whoa, this is, this is impossible for me to resist. Like when this deal showed up, I went to the bank so fast, they had to redo the asphalt. But you know, I also wanted to learn. It came with the software. I was gonna need to get the software anyway. So it was a no brainer. So like I said, I love the machine. I hate the controller. Man, this rich, rich auto pendant, I know it's fantastic that they have been able to cram so much control into such a little box. But unfortunately, I'm spoiled. I come from the Tormac Path Pilot. It is, this, this is just a freaking dream. It's just, it's just so amazing. So as a result, I go into this and it's like, man, this thing sucks. This thing sucks so much. My vacuum cleaners are pissed. They are like, hey man, we're supposed to be the suckiest thing here. The black hole at the center of the galaxy is in need of therapy because it was, he thought that it was the thing that sucked the most. And this thing just bit it out of the park. First of all, you're gonna need to walk the sun drive. So you have to put your sun drive on the computer, walk it in. To me, that is 1970s technology. I don't even understand how on earth 
that is a thing today. This is three, to me it's like, seriously? Come on guys, let's, let's make a way so that you can plug this to the network and just dump the files so you can come in and, uh, and not have to be uh, walking the thumb drive. Intriguingly, however, the controller came with a way to connect it to a computer. But check it out. You have to turn the machine off, turn the machine on, with the computer connected, so that it can recognize it as a computer access. Put the files in, then turn the machine off again, turn it on so that you can access the files. So it's not like you turn it on with a computer attached and the computer can communicate and you can run the jobs. It's either one or the other. Either you transfer files or you run the machine as a CNC router. So in other words, worthless. I might as well just walk the sun drive. It's like they invented a way to make it even harder. I do understand a CNC router is not a CNC milling machine. So of course, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to pretend that you're going to, you know, uh, type in G codes in here to uh, go to zero or find a, a location or find edges. That's stuff that you do on the CNC milling machine and probably does not happen with a CNC router. Definitely, it's not gonna happen with this. Now, I do not know all of the possible commands that this guy can do, so maybe there are secrets in there, but even navigating through it is incredibly cumbersome. Like, to do stuff that you do every day is like, oh, I press the wrong button, because truly it's only 16 lousy buttons and, and, and everything is in there, and then you have to go through menus, and it's, it's so, such a pain. Now, I get it, if you never done, if you have never done CNC and you look at this, like, oh, amazing, look at that, I can do all of this with just pressing these buttons. But once you go through something like Pathpilot or Linux CNC or Mac 3 or Mac 4, this thing, this thing should have come, could have come cheap with a trash can so that you can put it there. So one of the projects that I will uh, uh, explore in a near future is to just rip that out and put some electronics that I can control with a computer because this is just incredibly annoying to me. All right, so just, just to walk you through some of the steps that you will have to uh, follow. Obviously, you're gonna turn the machine, that is a knob down here, and then make sure that your e-stop is disengaged or it's not gonna go anywhere. And then you're gonna go into all axis home, okay? Now, I haven't turned the spindle on, but at this point in time, I might as well just turn the water cooling on so that I don't forget. Really fantastic construction. I'm super happy with, with the machine overall. Um, it is really sturdy. The vibration that you see is because this table is not a table that comes with, that, that, you, could, that, that you can buy with the machine. Um, it's just a, make, uh, a makeshift workstation, so it's a little bit it vibrates a little bit, but I've seen some other videos uh, where people have these machines and they, they're going to vibrate a little bit. All right, so the machine is honed and now you can go and start moving it with X plus, X minus, Y plus, Y minus, C plus, C minus. Uh, good luck finding exactly the, the coordinate that you're looking for. So here is X plus, Y plus, C minus. As you can see, there is a lot of travel, so you should be able to do an insane amount of, you're gonna get a lot of degrees. Now, if you only press the button a little bit, it goes half of a, this, I think it's in millimeters, and I think there is a way to change how much it moves per step. I personally have never uh, changed that, so I just, I just use it as it is. And then eventually, to find a file, you, gotta, uh, you have to go into an Egyptian pyramid and decode hieroglyphs, because this thing is it's not that easy to do. Like on, on Pathpilot, you go to this place called File, because you want to do a file. But in here, you do Run. So I go to run, and now it asks me to load the file. Now, 
to load the file, I recommend you go and eat something because it takes a while. So you don't want to faint while you find the freaking file through 300 pentillion menus. Not to mention, if you press the wrong button, you have to start all over again. So you find your file. By the way, no key in here says up and down file. It is the exact same keys that you were using to move the axis up and down. Uh, but which axis? Well, X, of course, because you know X goes up and down. So you find your file, and eventually you press OK, not run, because you already press run to go into file. Remember, run means file in some parts of the galaxy, so you just have to be aware. You can also press cancel if you want to go back until you get to the main menu. So, um, incredibly simple menu, uh, you know, in theory is super easy to learn, except that it's not incredibly intuitive. So, unfortunately, it is, I would rather, I would rather have that pilot if I could, or even Linux CNC, which is something that I'm learning. Well, let's run apart and see what happens. All right, so here are some of my uh, exp early experiments. These are little hearts that I um, cut with my daughter's uh, name in it. Um, you know, experiments to, to learn how to use the software, how to use the bits. Um, it has been a, a very nice learning experience because, you know, lots and lots of mistakes, but, you know, mistakes that you only make once. Uh, this is a little puzzle, puzzle-like structure, uh, again, something for, <laughs> for my daughter in her room. Uh, in here, I didn't know how to cut the, this contour, so that, that's some, that, that one took me a little while to figure out, but then I got it right, and this one looks much better. You know, I'm using the tap system, so obviously there's still some finishing work to be done here. These are experiments, so it's not like I'm gonna go through hoops to finish them. And to be honest, these are done on cedar pick fences, so not necessarily the best wood. Not to, mention, not to mention the wood was incredibly warped, so I tried to fix it as best as possible to the table. Uh, but you know, it, it wasn't uh, like the chamfers are not at the same distance from side to side because, because the wood is pretty warped. But you know, I, I'm blown away by the results. There you go, here are some of, some of my early experiments and how they came out. All right, YouTubers, let's close this video with uh, what is it that you are not going to get with a machine like this? I have my little cheat, cheat shit here so that I make sure I don't miss anything. You're, uh, with this machine, you're not gonna get fourth axis support. Um, I believe I read somewhere that the Axiom uh, has some sort of fourth axis support. I'm not sure if that's true. Uh, make sure you check that on your, on your end if that's something that is important to you. I have had fourth axis support uh, on my first laser and uh, on, the, on the end mill. To be honest, it's cool, but it's not something that I use. I, I don't even foresee me using it at all in here. So it's up to you if you need it. Uh, but this one doesn't have it. I would need to change the controller, which, to be honest, is not a bad idea. Um, if I wanted to have fourth axis, I would need to change the controller. A vacuum table. So this machine, as you can see, it doesn't have a vacuum table. I completely forgot to talk about the table, but you know, this is a fairly straightforward uh, uh, C channels here with some MDF, and you can put your own MDF on top. It's very straightforward stuff, so obviously, uh, pretty convenient that you can uh, change your own, uh, put your own slabs of MDF and, you know, sacrificial, so once you mess them up, put some new ones and so on. Uh, but this doesn't want a vacuum table, which is what I, what I was mentioning. Uh, of course, you know, I bet you can probably adapt some sort of vacuum table. I do believe they have a new model, the Laguna IQ Pro, which is a few thousand dollar, dollars more expensive, and my impression is that it does come with a vacuum table. So, again, I don't see myself knitting it, 
But if you want to, to have something like that, that is something that on a model like this, you have to add yourself. Variable spindle control. So when I got the machine, I thought that maybe, you know, um, this would have variable spindle control, that the software would specify into the controller uh, how many RPMs the spindle is going to rotate. That's something that, that you see on, you know, my end mill has that feature. This guy, however, does not have that feature, so obviously the controller did not incorporate variable spindle speed. So if I want to change the speed, I have to go into the VFD and change the electrical frequency. So right now it's set to 250, and the equation is very simple. Multiply by 60, 250 multiplied by 60 is 15,000 RPM. So from electrical revolution, multiply by 60, and that gives you your mechanical revolution in RPM. So I have been doing everything with 15,000 RPM. It seems to be working okay. Uh, I, I still need to experiment a little bit to get the speed correct, but the point is that, you know, on the software, you can set the number to whatever you want and forget it. <laughs> it's not gonna do anything because the speed is gonna be set at the BFD and that's the speed you're gonna get. Precise to, uh, I'm sorry, precise to positioning. So I have to admit I was surprised at how repeatable the machine was. So, you know, once you set your zero on X, Y, and Z, the machine will go there pretty repeatedly. So that's fascinating. But to get to a point which is incredibly precise, man, it's, it's uh, I'm sorry, not necessarily pre precise in terms of achieving the exact same position every time, that's, that's doable. I'm talking about you finding a point in space and, and finding a, a feature on your part, right? That's, that's stuff that I do all the time on the end mill. Um, with this controller, I, I, I have to imagine it's possible, but I think you might as well just get a colonoscopy because that's gonna be way easier. It's this stuff, um, the, the controller is not, doesn't make it easy to go to a particular location. Like on the end mill, oh my goodness. I mean, within seconds, you, you say, I wanna go here, boom, and it goes. So um, that, that, I don't think that's something that this, this machine was intended to do. And then of course, you're gonna be missing a lot of information. Like for example, on the end mill, I can see where the tool is in real time. You see a little drawing, you know, and it basically, shows uh, what, what part of the, of the program you are. You're, you're, that information is not available. You're blind. Of course, you can see the, the tool working, but, but you know, where are you in the code? You're, you're not gonna know that. Um, also, you don't have access to the G code. So, uh, you know, most people would rather not have access to the G code, so, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but the problem is that having access to the G code is actually incredibly useful. I mean, I have so many times that I have gone into the G code to change. I, maybe I mess up the speed or the depth, and you can go in, make changes. Um, so right now, any, any mistake that I make with my program, I have to go back to my CAD cam, move the freaking thumb drive with the file. It's um, it's something that a lot of people would rather not do, but boy, having the ability to do it is so freaking convenient. So unfortunately, with this machine and this controller, it's not because of the machine, it's because of the controller. That's a feature you are not gonna have. Uh, conversational profiles. Now, conversational profiles are, are rather uh, new. I'm not aware that this had been out there for decades. Maybe they were, but you know, I think for hobby CNC, they are maybe, what, five or 10 years old. Uh, I think Linux CNC and Pathpilot introduced this um, uh, rather recently. Like, I don't remember Mac3 ha having this, so, and I don't know if the other CNC controllers uh, out there had them, but I can tell you, you're not gonna have anything like that in here. Uh, so, but what are conversational? I've been talking about it, I, I have not even explained what it is. So let's say you want to make a hole, right? Uh, sometimes it's like, oh, you know what, I just want to make a hole. I want to make a pocket or I want to make a, some sort of feature. Well, um, re really good controllers will give you an a la carte of, of things that you can do without having to program 
the actual feature in a cat in a cat or cam um, uh, environment. So basically, you just say, you know what? I just want to hold here on x zero point three seven five and y one two three four five, right? And it just goes and does it. Um, it computes everything that it needs to do with in, ter in terms of the of the curves and the depths, and you just press a button and it computes that everything, gives you the G code, and goes. Um, that is on the controller, but you know, this controller, <laughs> dream on, there is nothing like that in here. And of course, the one that I'm gonna miss the most is a way to load files into the controller. That, is, that has been a veritable thorn. I have been running a bunch of experiments, and every time I want to make a little change, I have to freaking walk the thumb drive, which is so annoying. You know how it is with USB drives, you have to plug it in three times because it just doesn't go the first or the second time. So that's six times that you have to plug in the blasted thumb drive just to make one dinky little change versus if you could just dump the file through the computer, it would just be press a few keys, come to the machine, and then press the button, which is what I do with the Tormac. I just go to my CAD CAM, boom, send the file. When I go to Tormac, it is basically waiting for me, hey, the file changed, do you want to reload it? Yeah, boom. I tell you, I'm gonna miss all of those features. Um, but you know, let's, let's be honest, this is a different environment. It's very possible that a machine like this is, is not meant to do all of the things that you can do with a, with a milling machine, right? Uh, and I assure you, I mean, if you <laughs> this machine is mostly for making like plaques and little trinkets. It's not for making, uh, you know, like car parts or something for your motorcycle or even something for your RC car. Uh, so, I mean, you, can, can you do them? You can do some, and I think you're gonna be struggling a lot to make a good bunch of them where you need like a lot of features and a lot of different uh, ways of positioning the tool. I, I mean, I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but it's definitely not the best environment to get it done. Unless you change the controller and you transform it into the equivalent of a milling machine, it's still, it's still a router, so. Oh, I, I knew I was gonna miss one. The other thing that you're gonna get with this machine is uh, automatic tool changing or any kind of tool changing. Like for example, um, I mean you can you can change the tool with two wrenches, but say for example on the on my milling machine, I just press a button, the tool comes out, and I put the new one, and uh, you know there's a table of offsets that basically says, okay, now we have to readjust the coordinate system so we can continue working. There is nothing like that in here. So not only it, it's, it's, um, there is no easy way to change the tools other than removing the tool and putting a new one, you also have to refine zero on set every single time. Now there are little collets that people sell to try to make it a little bit easier. Uh, not collet, but like collet stoppers that allow you to kind of set all of the tools to the same height so you can uh, remove uh, and put a new tool uh, easier. Uh, but you know, uh, with the, uh, on the Tormac, with the TTS system, all I have to do is uh, measure the tool once, put it on the table, change the tool, and so on. In here, um, you don't have that means, not to mention there is no automatic drawbar or anything like that. So uh, quickly, before we leave, Let's do my, my last batch of conclusions. conclusions. Uh, as I said, the machine is very repeatable. I was actually surprised. Not that I wasn't expecting it to be repeatable, but I guess I did find it to be a little bit more repeatable than I thought it would be. Like, you know, you home the machine and somehow, even after switching power, it goes to what it was my, my old Zero. So it's pretty, pretty decent uh, in that sense. Um, you know, this is a machine for for mass production. And when I say mass production, I mean mild mass production. You're, you're not gonna make millions. I mean, you could make millions, but that's gonna take a while. Um, I, I, you know, it's basically for making dozens to hundreds of something. What I mean by that is you would not buy this machine for prototyping. Like, when I do prototyping on the, uh, the milling machine, it's, uh, 
it's basically I'm making one, right? And it takes me maybe a day to make one part because I have to take the part out, measure, put it back, find the, find the, find the part. That, I mean, I'm not, say, I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but again, it would be easier to just go and get a colonoscopy than trying to do that in here. It's just gonna be incredibly tedious, incredibly cumbersome. So, not recommended for prototyping. And I have to say, this machine and the Aspire software, wow, I mean, I was surprised. That was, that was actually very nice. So overall, I think it's tremendous value. The only thing that I really didn't like was the controller. Um, I tell you, if I could change it, I would, and I probably will, because it turns out that I can change it. So at some point in time, that's gonna be my next project with this machine. Uh, but I, I, I want to continue using it as it is, because right now, for making wooden products like the one that I showed, I mean, who cares if the, if the controller is such a, a pain in the butt? I mean, I guess I care, but uh, I can live with it for a little bit until I make it work with a better controller. But you know, most of the stuff that you get with, the, uh, with a very nice controller, you're probably not gonna need for making a wooden plaque. So it's, it's probably okay. Well, there you go, YouTubers. This is my review of the Laguna IQ. I hope you have found this material enjoyable and you were able to learn a few things. If you're thinking about getting one of these machines, I'm hoping this information is useful to you. If you did like the video, feel free to click that like button. If you like this channel content, feel free to subscribe. I wanna thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel and I'm gonna see you on the next one.